Kirk and James, how are y'all? Doing, doing good, well. doing Thank good. You. How about you? Happy to have y'all here. So I got to start by asking y'all a question that we ask everybody, because we're we going to get all up in your business. <laughs> and that is, how long have y'all been together and how did y'all first meet? We've been together for 13 years and we've been married for five years and we actually met online 13 years ago. I like to say our buddy um, Adam <laughs> actually introduced us, but yeah, it was online back in the day. Adam, does he got a brother named Adam too? <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know what I'm talking about, Samson. That's right. <laughs> okay, so so what made it click? What made y'all see each other? I think for me, I mean, obviously, first it was the physical attraction, um, and then from there, it just was just the natural conversations that we had with each other. There was consistency. Um, and just the attentiveness and just we, just the natural vibe that we had just continued day after day after day. So um, that's what I'd say how it started for me. Well, his voice won me over, I'll just be honest, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and But outside of that, he, he really was kind of an upstanding guy and he seemed like he had his head on his shoulders and he was going somewhere. And that really just kind of connected with me at that time, just being ambitious as I was, um, being somewhat new to the area. Uh, so, so that was something that really kind of, you know, caused me to gravitate to Kurt. When y'all got together 13 years ago, were y'all out or did you have to come out to your families? <laughs> You know, I can think about it. Back then, when we when we met each other, I think I was out. Yeah, wow. definitely. Yeah, I definitely wow. was out at that point. Yeah, I wasn't. <laughs> okay, so so what did coming out look like for you? Um, it was a challenge because I'm from the South and um, very conservative family, um, very religious family, and so that that was a tough one for me. Um, it was kind of like living a double life, really, um, having a full-fledged life in D.C., just kind of being immersed in the LGBT community here, but having that 600-mile that distance between me and, and Georgia um, was really something that I appreciated because I could be myself here, but then I kind of had to go back home and go back in the closet and only do that kind of on the holiday. So um, it was hard. It was hard, but it got to a point, Samson, where I was tired of playing that double role. And I just had to let the worlds collide. And, and I really kind of, you know, um, talked to Kirk about it. And I was like, look, this is hard because I'm close to my family. If they don't, you know, treat me the same after this, I'm really going to need your support. And he was there to be very supportive of me. Uh, so for you, Kirk, what was that experience like for you being a supportive partner during that coming out process? It was challenging. I, I, I was very much so excited in the beginning um, because I knew that he was the one for me very early on. Um, but it was an adjustment. It was definitely an adjustment. I had to really kind of put my feelings aside after some time and really truly understand that, you know, this was his journey and his experience. And I couldn't superimpose my, you know, my own personal experience onto him just because of how I thought, you know, our roundabout or our all around relationship was going to going to look like. So I, to be completely honest, it was challenging in the beginning. Um, I did feel like I had to kind of go back into the closet um, you know, and, and so that we could coexist together. But, um, you know, we, we found our groove with it after some time. It took a couple of years, I'd say, before we really were able to find a balance and what that looked like for us. Look, fast forward to today, we're going home together yeah. as a couple, uh, staying with my parents. And we're, I mean, everything is just out in the open. And it's just, it, it, sometimes it feels like a Hallmark movie. <laughs> like, I, I can't even lie, but... You know, there were definitely some growing pains, but like we've done a 180 with my family now. So how is that, you know, going home to your family? I know you are from Georgia, right? Yep. Going home to Georgia. That's Georgia. <laughs> and it's not Atlanta either, right? No, exactly. <laughs> it, it's the real Georgia, the dirty South, okay? It's the dirty South. So, the dirty so South, what, is right. like, what is that like taking your man down there to see your family in the dirty South? 
it actually feels good now because mama knows so I don't give a damn you know what I'm saying so like and we still have a close relationship so much so where he has a close relationship with her too and that's all that matters to me like extended family and just people that that look you know a certain kind of way when they see us with a baby you know in certain establishments like I don't care about that I, I'm used to that you know in the south but the fact that mom I always said if my mama knows and she accepts me I don't give a damn after that and I really don't you know so um for me it's kind of it, it's like an extension of our lives here at this point when y'all go out do people know that y'all are a couple they do now when they yeah. see a little baby yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and no girl you know no female um but you know before then we I would kind of say we passed a lot. Yeah, definitely. Because a lot of times people think we're brothers. Yep. That really work for us in our travels, you know, and, and <laughs> when we're out in public <laughs> for whatever reason, people always thought we were brothers. So yep. that worked. But like like Jay said, when now that we're parents, it's very apparent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, we so were, what is it about having a baby together when y'all out that gets people's attention to go, oh, they 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 together? I think in general, people are just surprised to see a man, period, just taking care of a child, you know, and, and being, being a provider in public. You know, unfortunately, that is still something that isn't very, you know, <laughs> the, norm, the norm, right? you know, but definitely when they see two men out together, it kind of really makes you stick out like a, like a unicorn um, has been our experience, even just the other night we were out to dinner together and you know people are kind for the most part they're really kind um straight couples you know they better be you look like yeah. you, look, you look like you'll beat them up <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah yeah right exactly we ain't yeah, worried about not, that we're too not, right? not worried about it if, if it does come to that but but for the most part we've we've had pleasant experiences you know in, in public and, and, and it's funny, Samson, because you'll see them while, like, when we go to a restaurant, they'll be looking like, oh, okay, like, when, when the ladies coming, where, where, you know, where the girls at? And then after a certain time, they notice that our engagement is just the same and we're, you know, taking care of, you know, the baby. And then it's just like, wait a minute, no, no girls. So, like, then they, you, you can kind of literally see the reaction over there that, you know, that comes over them when they notice that it's like, whoa, it, it, these two do, yeah. you know. And it's funny for us because we live in a predominantly black area. Like most people are used to seeing like white couples with the kid, but like black couples with the kid, two males, it, it, you, it, they re we really do turn some heads. I, I will say that. What gives y'all the courage to live out loud? Uh, for me, it just kind of stems from just feeling unapologetic, you know, about being who I am, you know, having so many blessings and being able to live a life, you know, that is, you know, complementary to one another is something that you shouldn't apologize for. You shouldn't have to hide it, you know, and being out in, in the workforce and throughout the years and just being bearing witness to other people straight couples and straight individuals sharing their truths and their experience so freely it's like i'm a human being just like you you know i'm i'm enjoying life you know all the same so i shouldn't feel like i have to hold that back for anyone you know so that that's what has been my driving motivation and for me i'm over 40 i done been through some things and i just don't care now like i i, I feel like i have matured in my life um and I, I just don't care i mean and people used to tell me all the time the older you get the less you care about other people and i feel it i live it every day i i just don't care like and, and i am who i am accept me for who i who i am and if you don't that's fine too i got a good village i got a you know i, I have people who love me um, I'm happy with where I am in life, so it really doesn't matter what other people think about me. So let's let's pivot a little bit. As a couple, what have been some of your biggest challenges, and how have you overcome them? That's a good question. That is a good question. Communication. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, on here we hear that a lot. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and how we've overcame that is by improving and, and and kind of you know getting into a good rhythm with our communication. Um, learning how to listen to each other versus kind of defending our own stance um, and, and really just being able to talk about anything, not having anything off limits that we can't discuss and talk about. And, and when we're listening to each other, really try to be intentional to, to hear and, and receive what the person's saying, even if you may disagree with it. it it's all about, you know, allowing each other that space to get it out 
and for us to process it together. Yeah. And I and I'll add to that love learning each other's love languages is huge. Mm-hmm. That was really, really big in the early years of our relationship because you know, you spend so much time learning yourself. You know, you I, I can speak for myself, you project what makes you happy and what works for you on you to the partner that you want to build a life with. And I'm guilty. I was guilty of that, you know, for some years in the early part of our relationship. And because I didn't know, I, I really didn't know what it took to learn someone else's love language. And to be honest, it still takes time. 13 years in, I still have to catch myself and, and make the necessary adjustments so that my love can be expressed and landed in the way that he can receive it. Come on, Black men who know what they know how to express their emotions yeah. and things. Yeah. I love yeah. Yeah. So when did you... When did y'all know that y'all were ready for a child and and what was that process like? I think we both individually always wanted to be parents, Mm -hmm. um, for sure. That's something that we've always wanted, but um, it's something that we worked towards. It it took time. It's something we didn't rush into because obviously being same gender loving couples, you have the choice, you know, doesn't just, there's no accidents here. Like it's intentional. Um, And we wanted to make sure that we were able to do it in a way that was conducive for our lifestyle, but also just to be able to offer full support and full, be fully present. You know, and that took time. That took time to get, you know, our traveling, you know, out of this, out of our system, um, just having the, the party life done, done with to some extent, being able to get our careers in order, make sure that our college education was where we wanted it to be um, so that we can truly fully be present and available, you know, because like I said, there's no accidents here. It, it, it takes planning. Um, so it took some time. But once we accomplished those things, then we were like, all right, there's nothing left to do but to do it. What have been some of the most rewarding parts of being parents? Watching that little boy uh, face light up and smile, it, it just pulls at my heart, you know, and, and just watching him hit all of his milestones and, and literally just grow from day one where we could just cradle him in our arms to now just running around trying to tear the house up. Like, you know, it's just amazing. Like, you, I mean, just to, to watch his journey and to just feel how happy he is um, makes us happy. Yeah, yeah. It's it's truly, you know, uh, a love that I never know. You know, I've never known. And to be able to, and not to say that I've never known it, but n- I've never known it from this perspective, to be a parent, you know, is, is something out of this world. And it's, it's truly, you know, moving yourself aside. You know, it's no longer about you. Like, it's all about the child. It's a great responsibility. Um, and it's something that I don't take lightly. I know Jay doesn't take it lightly at all. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a privilege because he truly is a gift. Um, and we are very much so feel blessed to be able to be, you know, a, a catalyst, you know, for God's gift to be well taken care of. And, and, and that's been a joy. So last question. Mm-hmm. As two Black, same gender loving men who have made a relationship work for 13 years now have a child. What do you think the most important ingredient for relationships are? Or what would be any advice you'd give to, to Black gay men who are, are looking to make relationships work? I will say be intentional and clear up front about your definition of a relationship, a marriage, um, your goals, all of that. Be 110% clear and on the same page in that regard, because that's going to be the foundation of your relationship. Um, when you're on that same page, when you are communicating effectively, when you have to support each other in the low moments and the high moments, like that lays the foundation, in my opinion. Yeah, and and I would I definitely echo that. And I would just say, just being truthful to yourself, be honest with yourself about what what you really want for yourself, you know, in life, and and be open to growth, understanding that you know it's not going to be an easy journey, you know, when you meet someone and you don't know what the future may hold, but you have to be prepared to understand that you're going to go through stages in life with yourself as an individual. So be give give yourself grace and give your partner grace, you know. Know, as you continue to grow and learn one another together, it's it's a conscious decision um, to to make it work. It's, it takes work. It's not you know the love is there, the fun, the excitement is there. All that's going to be there, but you can't 
overlook the fact that it takes work yes. and it's going to be, you know, a journey. 